Good morning and welcome to the eDiscovery Zone, live from the ABA Tech Show and the lobby of the Hilton Hotel in downtown Chicago. This is Tom O'Connor from the Gulf Coast Legal Technology Center in New Orleans along with Browning Marian of DLA Piper spanning the globe worldwide with offices <laughs> everywhere. Indeed. And uh, we're joined by our special guest right now, Steve Bennett from Jones Day in the New York office. Correct. All right. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, thank you for agreeing to answer some blind questions in the e-discovery zone. Goodness yes. knows what may be coming. Well, well, we just uh, had a, a wonderful conversation uh, with uh, Judge Waxy, and we were talking about uh, cooperation. I know you're a, a, a part of the Sedona uh, conference, uh, uh, and uh, you mentioned uh, just before we started a little bit about Lisbon. Uh, tell us what uh, uh, what's happening uh, with some of the uh, international. Is, is it working group? It's working group six. Six, and uh, tell us what's going on with that. So Sedona organizes itself essentially as a sort of mobile think tank, um, meets in various locations. Ironically, I've never been to Sedona itself, um, but it meets in various locations. And this particular working group has been struggling um, over the years with the issue of conflict between U.S. discovery law and international, specifically European, but also other, other areas, uh, privacy restrictions. What happens in a circumstance where a company say has operations both in the U.S. and overseas and finds itself involved in U.S. litigation where requests are being made for information that may be subject to privacy restrictions. We've made a, a good deal of progress at least in identifying, mapping out what some of the issues are, um, suggesting some practical solutions. Ultimately, it's a matter of comity, C-O-M-I-T-Y, um, between jurisdictions in the sense that there's no um, flat requirement that one or the other of those um, obligations yield. Um, but our goal essentially is to identify ways to mitigate um, the conflict uh, and provide some practical solutions that may be acceptable um, to judges in the U.S. and to privacy authorities overseas. Uh, well, you know that uh, Christian the, X... Sorry, the, the next meeting's in Lisbon. Uh, uh, you know, the uh, Christian X case that uh, I think uh, came out of uh, France, uh, uh, the result of that, uh, at least as a practical matter, is for us to only send associates to uh, France to do collections. Uh, how's Jones Day uh, uh, dealing with it? Well, some of the solutions that are... Um, that was a joke, by the way, yeah. about associates. Yeah, uh, I'm sure it is. <laughs> you would never do that. Uh, some of the solutions that are suggested really from the advisory um, uh, opinions of this Article 29 working party um, in uh, Europe and the French CNIL, which is their privacy protection authority, um, suggests um, trying to minimize the amount of information um, that's being uh, held and retrieved, that's processing under, under their uh, uh, term. Uh, uh, terms. Um, so, for example, if you can do some form of culling to reduce the volume of material that may contain um, personally identified information, that will help you ultimately in defending uh, against the argument that, that you've, you've um, uh, unlawfully processed information. That's one way to do it. The other way, and there's a whole complex of steps that could be combined uh, to try to come up with a, um, a net solution that may be acceptable. Another way to do it um, is to retain the information in situ. That is to say, we're not going to move it at all for, for hold purposes. It's just going to stay where it is. And we will do that culling um, in that location. So it's not going to go outside the European um, jurisdiction at all. One of the problems, or the essential problem, is that the United States is not considered uh, to provide adequate protection of privacy um, under its regime. It's a radically different um, approach to things. And so if you move the information from a European jurisdiction to the United States, therein lies the problem. But if you keep it there, if you do limited 
limited processing um, to call out um, information that uh, is subject to some privacy protection and then only provide the things that are um, not subject to that restriction or at least provide that first and see if that solves the problem um, that moves you in the direction potentially of solving. But you're gonna you're gonna need some you're gonna need some assistance. I'm harkening back to what I just heard from Judge Waxy about cooperation. You're gonna need some cooperation between the parties, and you're gonna need some understanding from the judge that's involved. Uh, and so part of the issue here is raising consciousness, uh, as much as that's a '60s term uh, yeah. transplanted to the to the, the current century. Um, we have. Um, a limited amount of experience with this. For, for most judges, you know, foreign um, litigation is not the run-of-the-mill uh, activity, and so they need some um, understanding of what the what the issues are. Not that they can't handle it. Lots of lots of folks can can grasp what the, the essential conflict is, but you have to be able to um, bring up uh, the issue early and make sure uh, that it's something that that, that receives um, some attention. So that it's not sprung at the last minute and, and it doesn't look like um, some excuse basically for withholding um, harmful information. How, uh, if this has come up yet, um, keeping the documents on site but having reviewers in another country, has that issue been raised? Um, that would um, raise some problems under, right. under, under the European authorities because the transfer of the information um, the access to it, and the, one of the particular concerns is the continuity of access, right? What the Europeans are not interested in is bypassing the whole um, European privacy concern by saying, oh, it's sitting in Europe. But folks in the United States, access. they they will just access it right. and download it or screenshot it or whatever they're it, whatever right. they're going to do. And right. That that would be a concern. So, um, great idea. Um, well, I've actually had that. It wasn't mine. I, I've, I've had that suggested to me in several cases I've been involved with by vendors. And my initial reaction was, I'm not sure the Europeans aren't going to have some serious heartburn over that. They, they would. And, um, you know, part of the, the issue here, uh, the same themes seem to come up in a whole bunch of different guises. Cooperation, proportionality. Right? Mm -hmm. So the issue um, may well be, well, just how much do you need this information? Uh -huh. Right? It's not unlike, frankly, Judge Shinlin's analysis in Zoo Blake where she went about looking at um, uh, backup tapes and saying, well, is it really redundant of some other set of information? If so, then we don't really even have to get to it. So another suggested solution is, first, produce things that are not subject to these restrictions, produce the stuff that's in the United States, for example, produce that first, but also perhaps do some sampling just to figure out what is there in Europe. And if you find that there is an overlap and a good faith basis for saying, you know, marginal utility, the, the additional value of this is relatively low, then perhaps either you forego it or defer it or limit it in some way. You've mentioned European standards several times, but in the, today's global economy, our good friend John Tredenik has a huge operation going on now with his company over in Japan. Sure. Are, are, what about the standards in Japan or India? Uh, we're, we're such a global economy and, and folks are, are doing business all over the world. Are we seeing the same issues there? Well, we for, for these purposes, the United States is not a global leader <laughs> in privacy law. Uh, for these purposes, um, I think the rest of the world, if, if it's considered the issue at all is looking more toward Europe um, than, than toward the United States. Ours is a sectoral approach. Ours is one that says in substance, um, see a problem and solve that. Mm -hmm. Done, right? So, COPA, for example, the Children's Online Privacy Act, we are concerned about protecting the privacy of kids. We have a statutory framework, we have direction to agencies to implement it, and that is in a box on one particular topic. The Europeans, by contrast, have as a fundamental right the right of privacy implemented in each of the individual jurisdictions, but as a, a basic fundamental human right. And you can argue one way or the other, which is better uh, in terms of uh, effectiveness um, for protecting society and efficiency and promoting business and all the rest of that sort of thing. But um, 
what, what you can't disagree is that they are different. That's the way they do it. They are different. Right. Uh, and so your question about what, where other nations are going, by and large, they're looking more to the European model. Okay. Right. Well, you have certainly um, plenty of countries um, that haven't touched the issue at all. Um, developing countries, for example, that just have not looked at it at all, or maybe operating essentially with um, some common law concepts. Um, uh, uh, South America, for example, there's this notion of habeas data, habeas information, which is this civil law concept um, that um, uh, essentially allows a right of action to review, well, what, what do you have in your hands about right. me? Right. right. It's a notion that is akin to privacy, right? But it's a special sort of thing. So I think we risk cultural imperialism, frankly, uh, to say, well, you know, the U.S. way must be the best way, or the U.S. way uh, is the only way, or we should try to um, shoehorn everybody into um, this sort of thing and so on the consciousness raising sort of level that's another um, part of part of the issue and it may require um, back to you know the same themes keep coming up we're going to be talking uh, about hold and search um, very very shortly you know, judge Facciola wrote this great opinion where he says uh, you know angels fear to tread into areas of the details of how you should do effective search. Well, angels to a certain degree fear to tread on just exactly what is you know, Belgian privacy law. You, you probably will need some expert assistance. And that immediately raises the question of cost, right? If somebody's gonna have to pay for first explicating what the issues are and then conducting the review and production in some special sort of way, the cost is going to go up and that harkens back to the proportionality issues. So the circle's unbroken. Right? It just right. it keeps on rolling. Right. Uh, <clears throat> again, speaking about the Sedona conference, uh, they've really published uh, already some papers uh, that, I, uh, that uh, my recollection is are extraordinarily helpful in helping frame the issues. Uh, perhaps you could tell us about yeah, those. They're, they're two good Good, um, good papers already extant. One is um, a summary of world privacy issues. It's not 100% comprehensive, however many nations, 140 nations. They haven't purported to cover all of them, but they have mapped out sort of what the big picture themes are. And then the second one was a framework that, to a large extent, um, takes the restatement of foreign relations law as a basic guide uh, and then explains how that that intersects with um, uh, U.S. Supreme Court um, uh, ruling in the Aeropostale um, decision, and then looks to some potential harmonization um, approaches, mostly aimed at explaining to U.S. courts what these issues are and how they can take into account these considerations. <laughs> so those are two, but there is another one that is in progress, um, uh, coming soon to uh, a theater near you. <laughs> Wonderful. We're getting close to the end of our time here. Uh, I'm not, not sure if we asked just quickly, when is the Lisbon meeting? Lisbon meeting's in June. Okay, and that's kind of segues to my question, which is, what do you see coming this year? Where do you think we're going in this area? If, if I were a betting man, and I am a betting man, <laughs> um, uh, I would bet that we will see um, uh, a further Sedona um, paper. The goal um, with all things Sedona is um, to try to get consensus. Um, uh, and so the aim with these uh, series of conferences has been to get input from academics, from practitioners, from judges, but also from European authorities. Right. And um, unfortunately, the way that their um, governance structure is set up, you really have 20 different or more uh, individual jurisdictions. So while the um, advisory group, the Article 29 working group, has some say in outlining what the issues are, each individual jurisdiction is going to say for itself, this is what German data protection law this is, is. this works. is what French data protection law is. So I, I, I don't um, overestimate what um, the potential impact is, but we're moving in the right direction. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you Good for you. stepping out of uh, the busy schedule. I know you're about to speak on a panel with, with both Judge Browning. Waxy and Browning. Yes. Uh, thanks again. And uh, this is Tom O'Connor and Browning Marine saying goodbye from the e-discovery zone.